A notch filter is a spectral processor, which reduces the amplitude of frequencies in the middle of the spectrum while allowing the low frequencies to pass through and the high frequencies to pass through. We can implement a notch filter by making a modification to our low pass filter that we looked at previously. In the case of the notch filter, we're going to set up parallel processing, and on one path, we're going to introduce two samples of delay. What this will do is cause destructive interference for a frequency that's right in the middle of our spectrum and will cancel out its amplitude. Let's switch over to MATLAB and look at how we can implement and analyze our notch filter. Here in MATLAB, I started a script called notch filter that I'm going to be using. I'm going to demonstrate an approach similar to what we used before with our high pass filter and also the low pass filter, where initially I start out just by taking the impulse response of our processing. So let me copy over some of this code, where initially we're going to clear things out we're going to set up our input signal that's an impulse, and we'll initialize our output signal. So that should be good. What I'm going to do is use a loop to go through each one of the samples in our signal, like we've done before. We have four in equal to one through the maximum sample number, which is five, just like we've done before. Then we'll set up the processing in here and we'll finish it up with end. So inside, we're gonna be populating this array Y. So here, Y is gonna be based off of our input signal. So we know for our dry path, that's just going to be X of N comma one. Then if we want to use samples from the past, previous samples, we can do that a couple of different ways. Before we set up this variable to store previous samples. I'm just going to use array indexing just to show you another approach. So in this case, we want to add in with it X from some samples in the past. This time it's two samples of delay. So two samples previous still in that same column. Now we only want to do this whenever this is a valid element of the array. So we can't have negative values here. So what we want to do is throw in a catch here that says, if, put in our conditional, if n minus two, if that one is less than one, and we're going to do something, otherwise, this is going to be true. So initially we'll just say that Y is going to be equal to X without any samples of delay. So what does this do? Initially here, when this would return for us an invalid array index, we're gonna skip this part of it and we'll just pass our dry signal because we don't wanna have any delayed signal yet to work with. Then when we get to the point where we're, we're able to use two samples from the past, then we're going to use this approach. So this will fill up Y for us. The one thing we'll probably want to do here though is let's use uh, 0 0.5 times both of these things here and then 0 0.5 times this whole part of our expression. This just makes sh sure that what we're gonna have is unity gain in our notch filter. So let's look at now what we end up with at the end. So I'll print out Y down here to the command window. We can look at the result of filtering. So we can see we've now introduced the two samples of delay. We have 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5. So if we wanted to use this as our array for our filter, filter array. This is where I'm gonna put in something called H that represents our array right here. The thing we have to be very careful about is making sure that we have this zero in here such that we're introducing two samples of delay in our filter. So I bring this down. H now 
is going to be equal to, we can do it a couple of different ways, 0 0.5, 0, and 0 0.5. We don't have to worry about the other zeros because there's no other values besides 0 after that. So this is what we can use now for our filter. And if I were to plot the frequency response with freq z of h, we can look at the, the amplitude. What do we see here now? This is the type of filter that allows the low frequencies to pass through without being changed in amplitude around zero dB, and also the high frequencies pass through without being changed. But then it's the frequencies in the middle of the spectrum at half of our Nyquist frequency that are going to be reduced in amplitude. So if I apply this filter to some white noise, we're able to hear the end result. So let's copy over some of that code so we can check that out. So we'll set up our input signal now, switch it over to white noise. Make some space for that. So now we've got our input signal is X. We have our sampling rate. We have our system H, which is our notch filter. And we'll get the output here too. So just for good measure, what I'm going to do is start out and have this be equal to X. So we can hear what the white noise sounds like. And then I'll come down here and I will play back from the command window what the filter noise sounds like. So let's hear the unfiltered signal the first time I run this through. Now what I'll do is play back the filtered for comparison. You should hear the mid-range reduced in amplitude. Just one quick comparison between these. So this is how we can set up and perform the processing of a notch filter that uses two samples of delay.